Uh, today we're going to talk about how to optimize a part and reduce support by changing the design so that you don't actually need any so sort of support at all, which helps to reduce cost of a part in mass production, both from the elimination of the material in the support as well as the labor and post-processing required to remove that support. Now, a real common example of this is something like this. This could be an electrical enclosure of some kind, which is something we do very often here at Slant 3D. But you would have a box of some sort with a window out the front. Now, most of the time, what people would do is they would take a box like this, they'd pull it in here to the slicer, and they'd rotate it. Let's go ahead and rotate the Z axis or the Y axis here, something like this where they would have the front face down on the bed and now you don't have any support. And there's nothing really wrong with this, except for the fact that this doesn't, uh, is not very mass producible. You cannot auto eject this part in most cases um, and you end up having this first layer of the print potentially be in a defective layer because if this part has to be made with like a white or some light color, this really large surface area opens itself up for all sorts of errors. Plus, we have these corners, which could potentially warp slightly, which deforms the look and appearance of the part. So you don't really want appearance faces to be on the first layer because they're reasonably uncontrollable. Now, it does get rid of the support, but that's not what we want. We want a part that is as aesthetically pleasing as we possibly can. So we're going to take it back here. Now, we can't print it on edge like this, which would create a non-appearance face on the bottom, which would be good, but then like this display port would look very nice. But again, when we go in here, now we have all of this support inside of the part. Um, so many people say, well, darn, we're gonna have support because that's the only way we can have this nice, clear outer surface finish from the, the side walls of the print. Um, but you're gonna have to have support in order to support this interior volume of the part. But that is incorrect. There is a very, very simple way to do this if you, the facility making the part is able to do it. Uh, we recently did a video about 3D printing bed slingers and there's really no way that they can do this because a part like this would not be possible. But let's go ahead and take this and just set the X axis to 45 and then center that. So right here, these are all 45 degree angles Nothing should need support in this regard. Nothing is a drastic overhang. There are no horizontal areas out in the space. And actually the whole part um, will have a nice uniform surface finish. Now the problem right here is that you would have this single surface down here be flat and then you'd have this corner be sharp. So this isn't the best option, but fundamentally it's what we want because there is no reason to have any support inside of this part. And you can see here as I slice with the exact same settings, support is not even generated. So let's go ahead and tweak the design so that it's actually commensurate to this, actually commiserate to this. Let's go ahead and just add a couple chamfers right here and right here. We'll make them five. And you can see now we have these flat surfaces. The interior is still the same, so the chip and the LCD can be shoved into this box. And the outside is still symmetric, still looks good. Let's go ahead and export that. Close your one, and we'll call it chamfer. Okay. Now, if we pull that version into here, we can now have that chamfer act as the flat surface. And we'll go ahead and take this and go like so. Center this sucker up. And now we have a very nice flat area. We'd want to fill it this corner a little bit more so there's a bit more meat in that or reduce the size of the chamfer, but that can all be adjusted. This is a part that's ready for mass production now because it has a very small contact area with the bed. It's a non-customer uh, facing face, so it'll look fine and it'll, be, it'll take very close inspection to tell that this corner has a slightly different texture than this corner over on the other side. We've eliminated all of the support. This part can now be automatically ejected by the machine itself. Uh, if the machine is a standard, a uh, good design for production machine and not like a bed slinger machine, bed slingers actually cannot reliably make these kind of pieces because since the bed is moving back and forth, this part would basically get knocked off uh, before it can be used by the actual, uh, before it can be finished by the printer itself. 
but this is a very good way to make a box or other sorts of parts and pieces that would normally need support, but if you can just rotate them 45 degrees, it's no longer necessary. And you're able to create a part that is very clean, very reliable, very quick to produce, looks really good, and is very scalable to be produced so that you can mass produce these inside of print farms. So hopefully that helps y'all. Uh, comment down below with other types of features or problems that you'd like us to address and how you can design parts to be mass producible with 3D printing. And please like and subscribe to this channel so that we can keep on making content and showing folks how to make mass producible 3D printed parts. Have a great day, everybody.